So uh, Gallup, let's get some new data out uh, about burnout. 28% of workers in a recent Gallup study say they are burned out very often or always. Whew. All right, I, that's just, that's crazy. Burned out very often, so let's call that majority of the time, or always burned out, 28%. And you may not be experiencing that often. Maybe it's been a long time since you felt burned out. I would say that's true for me. But we all go through it at some point because the data also shows that only 24% of workers report that they rarely or never feel burned out. So for me in my life, I, I would say rarely. Okay, but I'll, I'll share with you in the few times I've been burned out in my time at Ramsey Solutions, and by the way, I, I don't I don't even really believe it's burnout, and I'll explain why, but I have had the feelings that we associate with being burned out, okay? Because burned out is just a term and a label after all, but it does imply that your flame is gone, and and, and I I don't want to be too ticky-tack on that, so I'll move on. Uh, but but, but I'll, I'll share with you in just a few moments what I believe are the five primary causes of burnout, okay? So I'm going to give you that in just a few moments. And then what do we do about that once we know the cause? All right, so I'm going to walk you through that. Uh, but I want to focus in on the coping strategies, what in the data works according to the respondents and what doesn't work, because I think this is interesting. Okay, so they poll these people. So when faced with increased burnout, they ask these employees, what do you do when you feel burned out? 85% begin to think about how they approach similar similar situations before. So they're going, okay, I've been here before. What did I do? What worked? They're kind of looking to the past for some best practices or some something to hold on to, a hack, a life hack that they used before. 84% said uh, they remind themselves that they can succeed in, in their current situation. Uh, 83% find a friend to talk to to vent. 32% uh, okay, no, okay, so I want to stop there. Okay, so those were the, the very popular, they all said, I've used this before, I've used this before, so they kind of ranked all of the things, right? So do you think about how you handled burnout in the past? 85% said, yeah, I've done that before. Uh, how many of you remind themselves that you can succeed? It's a little bit of a pep talk. Personal pep talk. 84% said they've done that. Vent to a friend. 83% said they've done that. But only 32% said they looked for a way to avoid dealing with their current situation. Only 45% said they'd take a vacation. And only 50% said that they choose to spend more time with their family and friends outside of work. Okay. Only 32% responded, well, I try to find a way to avoid this. How do I get out? How do I avoid it? It's fascinating. I mean, where does that come from? I think it comes from a mentality that says work is going to suck. Most of the time, if not all the time, so you got to grin and bear it. That old phrase, grin and bear it. It's fake. It's not real. It's just, I'm going to grit. They ought to call it grit and bear it, right? But that's what's going on. Reminding themselves that they can see, succeed in their current situation, reframing their current situation as a challenge, and finding positive aspects of their current work does work. So they 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 also pull and say, well, what has worked? Not just what you tried, what'd you work? What worked? Well, reminding themselves that they can succeed, that's that pep talk. That's awesome. That's grit. Good. That led to a 42% reduction in burnout. And, and I want to pause there for a second because this, to me, encourages me. 
because I, I got to be careful how I say this because people get so easily offended. But I, I think we have made too much of burnout and I think we've made too much of anxiety and stress. You know what? Sometimes it's just going to suck. It doesn't mean your life has to suck or the entire day has to suck. I've had moments here at Ramsey Solutions where a part of my day sucked and I pulled it together. That's good old-fashioned grit. Reframing the situation, as this is a challenge that I'll get through. Again, this is more grit. 41% said that was effective. And finding positive aspects of the current work situation to focus on is great. Let me just tell you something. That right there is a game changer. You feel down, you feel frustrated on something that's not working or something that didn't work. The best way to not let that just suck your enthusiasm out of your body is to focus on other areas that are working. Hey, this didn't work. It's not working. I'm going to focus on something that does. Now, strategies that evolve involve avoidance or strategies that don't lead to self-confidence fail. So avoidance is, I'm just going to go drink my face off after work. Uh-oh. Avoidance is, I'm going to ignore this, not learn anything from it at all, and I'm just going to go along to get along. Oh, my gosh, you have surrendered your soul there. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to learn from it. I'm not going to push through it. I'm just going to shut down. I'm going to quiet quit. Those strategies throughout the data were overwhelmingly ineffective. Now, let me give you five causes of burnout that after talking to over 5,000 people on the air, thousands more at live events and Q&A, this is what I've determined. There's five causes of burnout. A lack of meaning and purpose in your work. You're good at it, but you really don't enjoy it, and the results don't, they don't matter that much to you. It's just something that you do. You got a toxic environment that could be from leadership to coworkers to the organization as a whole, and how they treat people, the rhythm of work, all of that. Third is you're overwhelmed. You feel like your nose is barely above the workload, and you just feel like you're drowning. Let me tell you something, that'll burn you out fast. That right there is the ultimate mental and emotional squeeze. Number four, you don't feel recognized for your unique contribution. In other words, you feel underappreciated. It's been a long time since you've been recognized by your leader. You don't know where you stand. And the fifth cause of burnout is boredom. Man, you find somebody who has had a challenge, they've overcome the challenge, work was challenging for a season, and now they're bored out of their skull, I'm telling you they're on their way to burning out. Because burnout, if you look at these five causes, is essentially a word that we are using to describe exhaustion. Just mental and emotional exhaustion. You don't have any juice. You got no energy. The flame is extinguished. Somebody came up with burnout to describe this, and when the fire burns out, the flame ain't there, folks. What is flame? The flame is the heat, the energy that burns the wood. So, so if I break burnout down, these causes, no meaning or purpose in the work, toxic environment, you're overwhelmed, you're underappreciated, you're bored. Guess what all those things do? They are extinguishers to your flame. But you can get it back all by removing the cause of the burnout. The answer to what do I do to fix it is within the cause. You have choices. Fix it. Be brave. Burnout will go away. <laughs>